It's a thousand feet tall and six miles long, and nobody knew it was there. Those are the dimensions of a newly discovered cavern underneath something called Thwaites Glacier in Antarctica. Now, to give you a perspective of how high a thousand feet is, I brought up this picture. Standard combat jumps are somewhere between 800 and 1500 feet. So you could easily fly an aircraft inside this cavern underneath a glacier in Antarctica. If that can go so long undiscovered, what else could be down there? Some have taken issue with the things I've reported having discovered on Google Maps. And you're right, it's open for interpretation, but given the quantity of things we have been able to discover, it's likely that at least a few of those things are not just tricks of shadow or light. They've also reported finding a new dinosaur, a lizard, and we've discovered that as well. In today's video, I'm going to show you a brand new, what I believe to be, skeleton of something called a plesiosaur. Some months ago, we discovered, one second, this frozen water monster. I'm sure many of you remember this. We're just going to zoom to it real quick. And once you see it, you really can't unsee it. Of course, here's the head, the body. We see the flippers or fins or whatever you want to call it here. We've done the measurements. It's pretty big. It's 600 feet long. And it's definitely open for interpretation, but I've gone back to this numerous, numerous times and never been able to really see anything else because of the difference in the scaling and how it just seems to be frozen in time. Well, with everything happening with Venezuela, I hadn't really gone down here and looked at much, but over on the other side, I was looking through a mountain range and found this. Now, it's kind of hard to make out, but when you look at the body shape, the long neck, the head, this is the animal that's largely been reported as the uh, most likely candidate for the Loch Ness Monster, or there are other lakes around that have had these sightings of things that were unexplained. And I decided to bring up some pictures. Let's see if I can find it. I'll get this a little bigger here so we can see what we're talking about. Now, the plesiosaur is a type of dinosaur. There are lots of different versions of it. Some of them are only a little bit bigger than a man. But I brought this picture up. This tiniest thing you see up here is how large a man would be in relation to these three other animals. So that's the scale of this type. And this is an articulated, well, somewhat articulated, I guess, skeleton. Maybe that's a bad way to describe it. It's a skeleton, we'll call it that. It's a Thinochromerum osborni, a short-necked Cretaceous plesiosaur. And when you put this up next to, let's see if I can do this properly without closing it out. Of course I did. One second. There we go. It is very much like that. I don't know how you could uh, look at those two things and not see the similarity. There we go. This is what I was going for. Haven't done this in a while. Bear with me. At least not with Google Earth Pro and all of the different maps of Antarctica that we've looked at. Now, you can make your own decision on this, but I will, of course, give you the coordinates and you can find it. It's in a historical layer and you have to use this technique where you take the lights down. It's right next to the time slider. Um, once you open up Google Earth Pro, 
and you see the um, selections above, it becomes pretty self-explanatory what you need to do. Now also, when I was looking through here, I found something else, and I want your guys' opinion of it. Because it's a little odd, given the report of this massive six-mile-long structure. I found what looks like this huge dome. Now it's kind of hard to, with perspective, know whether this is a crater or whether it's a dome. And as you go back through time, one second, let me turn the lights back up. There we go. With this, it doesn't change very much. And given that it's perfectly round, I'm uh, currently clicking through 2011, 2010. It just seems like it's out of place. There is one year here where things change drastically. Some years have more snow, some have less. But you can go all the way back to, let's see how far I can take it back. This is a picture from 1984. And this is present day. Very little down there has stayed perfectly static, round, structure type thing for that long. Especially given all the reports of the massive melting. And uh, this glacier apparently is responsible for holding back this Thwaites Glacier where they found the huge cavern, holding back many other glaciers from reaching the sea. And at least it's being reported that it could cause a catastrophe if it were to melt. But I tell you what, it's not too hard to imagine this, given the remoteness, that there could be an animal down there this size. And if they just found a glacier that had a hole in it, underneath it, so big you could fit two-thirds of Manhattan in it, six miles long and a thousand feet high, large enough to take off an aircraft, fly around and land in it, what else could be down there? They say, I think this article with the new dinosaur says, you know, 250 million years ago or whatever, it was a lush tropical paradise. Well, if that's the case, then there could be all sorts of things down there that we haven't found. Cities, civilizations, who knows? It's one of the reasons I've decided to branch off the channel. We talk about Venezuela, we talk about the prison crisis, and we talk about Antarctica. Because I think those things coming up in the future are going to be um, more relevant. This country can't hold 2.3 million people indefinitely. It's another subject for another day, but it's pretty mind-blowing. I'll bring up the picture of what I found one more time, just so people can get a good look at it. Sorry about the blinking here real quick. The reason I've done this is this is very hard to see unless you turn the lights down, you put it in twilight so that you get the contrast. And one other thing I'll do here right at the end, it was kind of confusing when they talk about Western Antarctica or Eastern Antarctica. I was like, how can there be a Western Antarctica or an Eastern Antarctica? Be at least as far as a point. I mean, you could talk about a direction of travel, perhaps, but what they're doing, and I'll see if I can square this away, is they are using the same reference we are. If you take Antarctica, like this on Google Earth Pro, and put this uh, Cape of Antarctica, or whatever they call this part here closest to Argentina, as if it were at 12 o'clock. Everything to the left is Western Antarctica. Everything to the right is Eastern Antarctica. This Thwaites Glacier they're talking about is over in this general direction in Western Antarctica, coincidentally where we have found a great many things. Let's see if I can get it to come up here real quick while I'm talking. There we go. It's right here. And apparently, somewhere underneath here, there is a cavern 
big enough to hold a major U.S. city. It's just stunning. It's absolutely stunning that they've just now revealed this. So I'll let you guys make up your mind. I'll give you the coordinates for the dome and for the, uh, the new find and for the old frozen water monster from last winter. So you guys can look at it yourself and make your own decisions. You guys have a great night. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you next time.